There's no question that we're living through a pivotal moment in global history. This is a time my children and their children will hear of. Survivors of another defining historical moment are using this time to share their stories far and wide. But they also want to dispel any notion that quarantine is reminiscent of the Holocaust. This week, across the globe, we pause to remember the most extensively documented crime in the history of the world. International Holocaust Remembrance Day commemorates the six million Jewish victims and millions of others persecuted and murdered by the Nazis during World War II. For the record, it is profoundly disrespectful to the memories of survivors and the suffering of those who were killed to equate the Holocaust to anything. But that does not stop mostly Republican lawmakers and public figures from trying to compare what is going on right now to this horrible time in human history. Trample on snakes. It's no comparison, son. It's just embarrassing. It's been seven hours and 15 days since you took your love away. This morning, turmoil in the Republican Party on Capitol Hill. House Republican leader Kevin McCarthy condemning Georgia Congresswoman Marjorie Taylor Greene after repeated comments comparing mask mandates and COVID vaccines to the Holocaust. There's nothing comparable to it. Nothing to compare to it. I agree. There is absolutely no comparison. Absolutely nothing that compares with the indignity of that yellow star. COVID restrictions could be compared to restrictions Jewish people lived under in Nazi Germany. It is wrong, wrong to compare these two. There is absolutely zero comparison. How can you compare it to a disease? Nothing to compare. How, how can you compare it? People make these comparisons. Those comparisons between green passes uh, to the yellow star, uh, comparing uh, Dr. Fauci to uh, Mengele and things like that. Comparing Ron DeSantis or Donald Trump to Hitler, comparing Joe Biden 
uh, to Hitler, comparing Dr. Fauci to Dr. Goebbels. I mean, really, it's all madness. The Hitler of the Golden State, Gavin Newsom, gives the orders, wear a mask, stay inside, don't travel. Socialist Democrat Gestapo going door to door, house by house, uh, trying to stick uh, uh, syringes in people's arms. You're forcing people to wear masks? They were forced to wear a star. Using a Sharpie to brand students with a number to distinguish the unvaccinated from the vaccinated. A prom should never inspire images in my mind of Auschwitz. Maybe our time is better spent reading books about the history of the Holocaust instead of making insensitive, outrageous, and ahistorical comparisons to it. The anti-vaccine movement had its big coming out and party in Washington, D.C. this weekend. The paranoid movement of conspiracy theorists crosses ideological lines, sweeping up people who identify with both the right and the left. Speakers at the rally ranged from right-wing Dr. Robert Malone to, of course, members of America's most famous Democratic family, anti-vaccine advocate Robert F. Kennedy Jr. Last weekend, Robert F. Kennedy Jr. suggested Anne Frank, the famous teenager who hid from the Nazis in an attic in the Netherlands before being caught and sent to die in a concentration camp, was better off under Hitler than Americans who are currently subject to vaccine mandates. Even in Hitler, Germany, you could, you could cross the Alps into Switzerland. You can hide in an attic like Anne Frank did. I visited in 1962 East Germany with my father and met people who had climbed the wall and escaped. So it was possible. Many died truly, but it was possible. Today, the mechanisms are being put in place that will make it so none of us can run and none of us can hide. Kennedy later apologized. His own wife condemned his comments. I want to apologize. And just two weeks ago, a Republican congressman from Ohio, Warren Davidson, tweeted an image of a Nazi document and wrote the following. This has been done before. Hashtag do not comply. Let's recall that the Nazis dehumanized Jewish people before segregating them, segregated them before imprisoning them, imprisoned them before enslaving them, and enslaved them before massacring them. So what kind of egregious act drove Davidson to react this way? It was the mayor of Washington, D.C. requiring adults to have proof of a COVID vaccination, a photo ID, and wear a mask while indoors in public. Davidson later apologized. I want to apologize. And then there's Colorado Congresswoman Lauren Boebert. Back in July, she referred to door-to-door -door vaccine awareness advocates supported by the CDC as needle Nazis. And of course, don't forget, Georgia Republican Congresswoman Marjorie Taylor Greene. We can look back in a time in history where people were told to wear a gold star and they were definitely treated like second class citizens, so much so that they were put in trains and taken to gas chambers in Nazi Germany. And this is exactly the type of abuse that Nancy Pelosi is talking about. She went to the National Holocaust Museum in Washington and apologized for using Holocaust comparisons to criticize face mask mandates on the House floor. The Holocaust is there's nothing comparable to it. It's, it's, it happened and, you know, over six million Jewish people were murdered. And there are words that I have said and remarks that I've made that I know are offensive. And for that, I want to apologize. But then weeks later, Green was back at it, as you'll recall, attacking efforts by the White House to encourage Americans to get vaccinated by calling those leading the efforts, quote, brown shirts. That is a reference to the paramilitary organization that helped Hitler and the Nazi party rise to power. They were also known as brown shirts. These are just a few examples. In fact, we did a cursory look and found at least 32 examples from lawmakers using Holocaust comparisons just in the last two years since the beginning of the pandemic. The Holocaust should not be used to make political points. The systematic targeting and genocide of Jewish people is not in the same universe whatsoever as public health measures intended to keep people safe during a pandemic. The deaths of six million Jews should not be a punchline or a way to rally supporters. 
I want to apologize. I'm sorry some of my words make people uncomfortable. I'm sorry you have to hear that. I'm genuinely sorry. The COVID brought Holocaust rivalization to a summit. Sometimes done by politicians, by public figures are despicable. And Yad Vashem is very clear in demanding those persons to retract, to educate themselves, but also demanding world leaders and educators to be proactive in combating this trivialization of the greatest massacre the Jewish people and humanity ever knew. Let me say this clearly here. Anyone who compares the COVID measures with the National Socialist policy towards Jews is trivializing that anti-Semitic state terror and the Shoah, and that is unacceptable. It is unacceptable. Anti-Semitism does not need reasons to thrive. It sometimes uses excuses, like COVID-19 is one of the excuses. The lockdown is one of the excuses. But as I said, those are not reasons. Uh, we see even anti-Semitism in places in which literally there are no Jews today, either, either because they left or they were murdered. My word is very simple. Take seriously everyone who speaks with threatened others. Take him seriously. Don't say, ah, it's not serious. He will not do it. He doesn't mean it. Take him seriously. When Hitler came with his idea, first in the beginning, people didn't believe that he means it, that he will do it, that he will succeed to kill millions of people, Jews and non-Jews. Later on, we discovered that we have to take seriously everyone who is threatening the society, threatening his nations or other nations. Take it seriously. What a stupid son of a bitch. It was Holocaust Remembrance Day yesterday, and this year some are speaking out about the use of disturbing imagery by some protesting public health measures. Some protesters wore a yellow star as they denounced a plan for a COVID health pass. That star was the symbol Jews were forced to wear in Nazi Germany. When the city of Anchorage, Alaska considered a mask mandate, some opponents also wore those stars. And this week, the man on the right was wearing a yellow star while driving to the protest in Ottawa. With the first wave of stay-at-home orders came a wave of tweets like these, invoking the Holocaust and Anne Frank's famous account of her time in hiding while discussing today's quarantine. Another Republican lawmaker is facing criticism for comparing COVID-19 restrictions to the Holocaust. Ohio Congressman Warren Davidson has since apologized. I want to apologize. For this tweet, which he posted last week. It includes a picture of ID papers from the time when Nazis were in control of Germany. He was responding to Washington, D.C.'s new rules, which require proof of vaccination to enter public places. And Davidson isn't the only one who's been criticized for these kinds of comments. Congresswoman Lauren Boebert and Congressman Madison Cawthorn have also drawn similar parallels. I wanna bring in Jonathan Greenblatt to talk about this now. He is the CEO of the Anti-Defamation League. To compare having to show that you've been vaccinated to walk into a restaurant to the Nuremberg laws that regarded my grandfather and millions of other European Jews, again, as subhuman, is, you know, it's historically inaccurate and it's horribly offensive. To draw that parallel is sickening. So, you know, it, it's not always, it doesn't always have to do with COVID and it, it's not always Republicans. Um, and I'll give you an example uh, from uh, 2019. Congresswoman Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez compared border facilities run by the Trump administration to concentration camps. Just this week, we had a Democratic aspirant for governor in Florida compare Governor DeSantis to Adolf Hitler. I mean, come on. I've seen those facilities where kids and teenagers were housed in chicken wire cages. I've seen it, I've talked to them. But to compare them to the Nazi death camps, I mean, it's twisted and it's wrong. It is ugly and it is revolting. So Holocaust denialism or Holocaust distortionism, both of those are a form of trying to undermine the legitimacy of the Jewish people in our memory. It's all a kind of hate against Jews. And I just think it is deeply, deeply amoral. It's so exaggerated, it's offensive. It's, and it's really just wrong. 
you could buy Mein Kampf. That protocols of the elders of Zion, uh, type of anti-Semitism. Jews rule the world. Jews control everything. It's remarkable to see. That the power of misinformation is in some cases overriding what we all know already to be true. Y you can't allow this kind of language on your platform. If you spread hate speech, we're not gonna promote you with our algorithms. If you get a strike against you, we're gonna take you off the platform permanently. If you're gonna post a video, we're gonna delay, I mean, there's no natural law that says a video that I post to YouTube should be should instantaneously be seen by the planet Earth. That's not like a law of gravity. Kicking some Nazis off your platform, that's pretty easy. That should scare all of us. Kansas Governor Laura Kelly has made it official in 10 days. Kansas lawmakers will start a special session to respond to vaccine mandates imposed by the federal government. The committee also heard from a number of people who say the mandate violates their rights. One speaker wore a yellow star similar to what the Jews were forced to wear in Nazi Germany during the Holocaust. Trample on snakes. Senate President Ty Masterson is among those condemning this act. He said, quoting here, Senate Republicans reject in the strongest possible terms any analogies to the Holocaust. Such comparisons are inappropriate and bear no resemblance to the issues we are debating today. There's nothing comparable to it. Nothing to compare to it. I agree. There is absolutely no comparison. So joining me now is a man who was actually there. Hungarian Jews were deported in 1944 to the concentration camps in the March of Death. My mother was ahead of them and she hid me with the Red Cross in Budapest. 74 years later, Tzvi has to deal with a new situation as the coronavirus pandemic rages and brings horrific memories of the past. Every person has an existential anxiety. That's human nature. It grows in a time of crisis like the Holocaust or an international pandemic. It's an unseen enemy. Plus, there's a wave of information from the media and you don't know if the information you receive is true. And these gutless Holocaust victims. So it's very intense and the situation takes you back to the past. There's nothing comparable to it. Nothing to compare to it, I agree. There is absolutely no comparison. Margot Friedlander, a survivor of the Holocaust who turned 100 years old in November, on Thursday condemned the co-opting of the yellow star of David Patch, which Jewish people were forced to wear during the era of Nazi Germany, by anti-vaccine protesters. Speaking to the European Parliament in Brussels, Belgium, Friedlander reminding people of the importance of remembering and honoring the victims of the mass genocide, Reuters reported. Ich wohne seit 75 Jahren in New York, aber habe noch die grauenhafte Zeit des Schreckens und Menschenhasses gut im Gedächtnis. Leider ist dieser Krebs wieder erwacht und Judenhass ist in vielen Ländern der Welt, auch in Deutschland, wieder alltäglich. Diese Krankheit muss so schnell wie möglich geheilt werden. Der Antisemitismus ist da. Er findet sich nicht nur am äußersten Rand, nicht nur bei den ewig Unbelehrbaren und ein paar antisemitischen Trollen im Netz. Er ist ein Problem unserer Gesellschaft, der ganzen Gesellschaft. Der Antisemitismus ist mitten unter uns. There is no, no, I just want to say there is no comparison to the Holocaust. What is really horrible is that down on the National Mall, some of these protesters were displaying Holocaust imagery, comparing vaccine mandates to the Holocaust, uh, which is obviously repugnant. And, you know, one of the other reactions that I had, Dr. Reiner, is that many of these protesters were standing very close to uh, where we used to see those uh, those white flags, hundreds of thousands of white flags uh, marking uh, in, in memory uh, all of those hundreds of thousands of people we lost in this country to COVID. What is your reaction to what you're seeing down on the mall today? It, it's disturbing. It's so disturbing. It's all a kind of hate against Jews. Yeah, I mean, to, to say the least, you know, and the, uh, you know, relating it somehow to, to what six million Jews went through 
uh, who were exterminated during, during the Holocaust is, uh, to say the very least, uh, uh, repugnant. And it's ridiculous at this point. This is going to be remembered by the younger generation as a catastrophic moral crime. I, I like the uh, sacrifices. That's the sacrifice they made. I'm done with that attitude, honestly. I mean, you know, I mean, she needs to understand that uh, trolling people to own the libs is not a sacrifice. It's so disturbing. Those comparisons between green passes uh, to the yellow star, uh, comparing uh, Dr. Fauci to uh, Mengele and things like that. In absolutely appalling remarks, Fox host Laura Logan compared Dr. Anthony Fauci to the Nazi angel of death, Joseph Mengele. Listen. What you see on Dr. Fauci, this is what people say to me, that he doesn't represent science to them. He represents Joseph Mengele, Dr. Joseph Mengele, uh, the, doc, the Nazi doctor who did experiments on Jews during the Second World War and in the concentration camps. And I am talking about people all across the world are saying this. Well, it's disgusting uh, to hear someone comparing Dr. Mengele, uh, who was, again, uh, a you know, a doctor of death uh, who killed children. As we see, some countries are using to give boosters to kill children. Those millions taken by unspeakable evil, we all remain in gratitude for their sacrifices. I, I like the uh, sacrifices. Shoot those who try to kidnap and vaccinate your child. He experimented on twins. Uh, my father uh, was killed in Auschwitz, my older brother, to uh, Dr. Fauci, who uh, wants to save lives. Anthony Fauci sat there and took the vaccine. My dad sat there and happily took the vaccine. We were grateful to science. And, uh, you know, Dr. Walensky, Dr. Fauci are there to save lives. I believe that the healing arts lie on the path of goodness the same path all of you have chosen in remembering and listening to the voices of those who perished in the Holocaust. It is important we never forget. Uh, you know, Mengele wanted to kill people. We spoke, we've met, and I, I've spent um, the better part of a decade um, talking to survivors, listening to testimony, helping my father write his memoir. And um, we've come in contact with so many survivors of Mengele. You know, one really lovely woman, Jeanette, was telling us that she was whipped and beaten at 14 years old by Mengele. She still has the scars today in her 90s from Joseph Mengele. To draw that comparison to um, any scientist who was trying to, you know, help save lives, Joseph Mengele was trying to advance a disgusting race theory, and he was experimenting brutally, taking body parts from children, um, injecting, uh, drawing blood from their necks. There is no parallel. There's no question. And these gutless Holocaust victims. Unglaublich. Muss ich mit meinen nunmehr 100 Jahren sehen, wie Symbole für unsere Ausgrenzung durch die Nazis, der sogenannte Judenstern, heute von neuen Feinden der Demokratie auf offener Straße schamlos Besitz benutzt werden, um sich selbst mitten in einer Demokratie als Opfer zu stilisieren. Marvel actress Evangeline Lilly is speaking out against COVID vaccine mandates. In a message shared to Instagram on Thursday, the Ant-Man star reveals she attended a controversial rally over the weekend. Lilly says, quote, I was in DC this weekend to support bodily sovereignty. All of you in the crowd, I thank you, I love you. Adding, quote, I believe nobody should ever be forced to inject their body with anything against their will. Robert Kennedy Jr. sparked controversy on Sunday while speaking at the same event, where he compared vaccine mandates to the Holocaust. The nephew of John F. Kennedy has been an outspoken critic of the COVID-19 vaccine. Actress Cheryl Hines took to Twitter to condemn her husband, Robert F. Kennedy Jr.'s comments. She wrote in part, quote, the atrocities that millions endured during the Holocaust should never be compared to anyone or anything. His opinions are not a reflection of my own. Lily posted an apology to Instagram days later, writing in part, quote, 
My direct and special apologies to those most affected by this pandemic. I want to apologize. A Facebook post by the Oklahoma Republican Party sparking outrage across the metro and the internet. The post seemingly comparing private employer vaccine mandates to Jewish people being forced to wear the yellow star of David, urging Republicans to find Some say it brings up images of Nazi Germany. News Force Caitlin Ogle on the story for us tonight. And Katie, it's raising a lot of eyebrows. The Jewish Federation of Greater Oklahoma City says they're all for free speech, but say the recent post on the Oklahoma Republican Party's Facebook page crosses the line. It's sad and ironic that anyone would draw an analogy from the largest reported genocide in the 20th century with public health attempts to save lives. The Jewish Federation of Greater OKC calling this Oklahoma Republican Party Facebook post offensive and horrific appearing to compare private businesses requiring employees to get vaccinated to the Holocaust. The post features a yellow star of David along with the word unvaccinated and a microchip with the numbers 666. To take it as it was used in the Holocaust to persecute and kill Jews and use it because of a disagreement on public health is so offensive. The Post claims those wearing the badge would have limited access to travel, work, and health care, along with the words, quote, wake up, people. Is this sounding familiar? This is not like sending people to gas chambers um, um, or to um, be burned alive, right? The Oklahoma Republican Party saying it's a call to action for patriots, asking followers to call the lieutenant governor's office to address the issue while Governor Kevin Stitt is out of the country. News 4 reaching out to Lieutenant Governor Matt Pinnell, getting his office. So I've been talking um, with our chief of staff and that's something that we're not interested in at the time. We also reached out to the GOP's office, but with no luck. Well, I can tell you that there's, it's not anti-Semitic. Seems to be the rumor going around, but it's not anti-Semitic. Okay, I will get this over to our media relations department and have them contact you. I hope rather than getting defensive, they will do the right thing, which is to apologize and to not do it again. And late this evening, we did hear back, but from state leaders. In a combined statement, the governor, lieutenant governor, and several U.S. congressmen calling the comparison wrong and irresponsible. People should have the liberty to choose if they take the vaccine, but we should never compare the unvaccinated to the victims of the Holocaust. Meanwhile, I just checked minutes ago, and that post is still up. Jewish people forced to wear that Star of David in uh, Nazi Germany. We have to talk about this very bizarre uh, anti-vaccine uh, rally in Washington today. Uh, just strange stuff um, happening here in Washington, strange things afoot. Um, here's RFK Jr., the son of uh, the former attorney general. Um, he's an anti-vaxxer making some incredibly offensive comments earlier today. Let's watch. What we're seeing today What we're seeing today is what I call turnkey totalitarianism. They are putting in place all of these technological mechanisms for control that we've never seen before. It's been the ambition of every totalitarian state from the beginning of mankind to control every aspect of behavior, of conduct, of thought, and to obliterate dissent. None of them have been able to do it. They didn't have the technological capacity. Jews rule the world. Jews control everything. Even in Hitler Germany, you could, you could cross the Alps into Switzerland. You can hide in an attic like Anne Frank did. I visited in 1962 East Germany with my father and met people who had climbed the wall and escaped. So it was possible. Many died truing it, but it was possible. Trample on snakes. Okay. I mean, this is just insanity. I mean, I mean, John and Margaret, I, I, it just boggles the mind. There's, I think there's something wrong with him. Yes. There's no yeah. comparison.
No, and yet we hear the comparison made over and over again by by anti-vaxxers and folks on the right. This and and of course, the, 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 there's just no comparison in any sane reality-based world. And yet they keep being attracted to it. You want to talk about technological surveillance state? Talk about China. Don't talk about efforts to vaccinate people uh, during a global pandemic. This is not about control. This is not about control. This is not about control. And the fact that he's he's singing these same talking points as Marjorie Taylor. Green and Lauren Boebert and all these other folks is a sad descent. As his father once said in a very different time, what we need in the United States is not division. What we need in the United States is not lawlessness, um, but is is love. And 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 focusing on facts and unity. And and uh, RFK Jr. on this particular point has lost the plot for a long time. This is just a, a sickening sign of it. It's just disturbing to see. I mean, this has come up time and again. We've seen Marjorie Taylor Greene make these comparisons and so on. Uh, it's just so disturbing. This kind of dial to 11 uh, uh, in, insanity, of insulting comparisons to Anne Frank and, uh, and Auschwitz and the Nazi regime, which we hear over and over and over again, mm. it indicates just how, uh, how, how just these folks have lazy. lost the plot. It's, it's, it's worse than intellectually lazy. Uh, it, it, it's fear mongering from the fright wing of the worst sort. There's this ongoing feud within the GOP that seems to be escalating now. It's fueled by new comments from Congresswoman Marjorie Taylor Greene, who compared mask wearing to the Holocaust. Congresswoman Liz Cheney, who was recently ousted in her number three position in the House and has since embraced her new role as the standard bearer for her party, calling out Trump's lies. She is now taking on freshman Congresswoman Marjorie Taylor Greene for her recent comments comparing the House's ongoing mass mandate to the Holocaust. Saturday, Congresswoman Liz Cheney also weighing in, tweeting this, saying, this is evil lunacy. This is dead on arrival. Pitsy Boris. Suzanne, thank you so much. Now, after what are deemed very insensitive comments comparing mask mandates to the Holocaust, Congresswoman Marjorie Taylor Greene didn't apologize when speaking to a reporter yesterday. Rather, she doubled down. We shouldn't be having this kind of treatment. No one should be treated like a second-class citizen for saying I don't need to wear a mask or saying that my medical records are my privacy based on my HIPAA rights. And so I stand by all of my statements. I said nothing wrong. And I think any, any rational Jewish person didn't like what happened in, in Nazi Germany and any rational Jewish person doesn't like what's happening with overbearing mask mandates and overbearing vaccine policies. Do you understand, though, why some would be upset and offended by the comment? Well, do you understand how people feel about being forced to wear masks or being forced to have to take a vaccine or even have to say that whether they've taken it or not? These are just things that shouldn't be happening in America. This is a free country. Brainwashing the German society against Jewish people by portraying them as a threat to society and calling them disease spreaders. Sounds familiar, anyone? This then turned into show me paper segregation and eventually led to brutal killing of entire race of people. If you ask Holocaust survivors why they complied in the beginning, as many voluntarily entered concentration camps, they will tell you because no one had the guts to stand up. I'm really excited to jump on this new trend. I'm calling it first day at an unvaccinated camp. Shame on you. Are you trying to look like a Holocaust survivor? because you don't want to be vaccinated? I was four years in a concentration camp. Here, our world is stopped. Do you want me to help you? Have the day you deserve. And these gutless Holocaust victims, I hope you have the day that you deserve. The aforementioned Dr. Anthony Fauci is the director of the National Institute of Allergy and Infectious Diseases, as well as a chief medical advisor to President Joe Biden, and he joins me now. I, I feel like I'm talking to you and you've become this character in the imagination of tens of millions of people in this country because they think that you are you represent some tyrannical plot to keep the boot of covid restrictions on the neck of a free people. Jews rule the world. Jews control everything. Um, and Laura Logan, uh, who is some streaming show somewhere, uh, uh, had this to say about you in this comparison. I want to play it for you because I want to give you a chance to respond for yourself and then we'll move on. Take a listen. 
there's no justification for putting people out of their jobs or forcing vaccine mandates for a disease that ultimately is very treatable. It's cheap to treat. Medicines are available all over the world and it has death rates that compare very much to seasonal flu. And so in that moment, what you see on Dr. Fauci, this is what people say to me, that he doesn't represent science to them. He represents Joseph Mengele, Dr. Joseph Mengele, uh, the, doc the Nazi doctor who did experiments on Jews during the Second World War and in the concentration camps. And I am talking about people all across the world are saying this. I just wonder how you respond to that. Trample on snakes. Well, Chris, I think the response is what so many people throughout the country and the world are responding to that absolutely preposterous and disgusting comparison that she made. It's an insult to all of the people who suffered and died under the Nazi regime in the concentration camps. And these gutless Holocaust victims. I mean, it's it's unconscionable what she said. Forget about the fact that she was being totally slanderous to me and, as usual, had no idea what she was talking about, saying that it's as benign as flu. When did ever influenza kill 770,000 Americans? So not only is she being slanderous and disrespectful to so many people who were killed in the concentration camps by Dr. Mengele, but she absolutely has no idea what she's talking about. She's completely incorrect in everything she says. What I find striking, Chris, is how she gets no discipline whatsoever from the Fox network, how they can let her say that with no comment and no disciplinary action. I'm astounded by that. Kicking some Nazis off your platform? That's pretty easy. Mark my words, we will hold Tony Fauci accountable. We will hold Deborah Brooks accountable. We will hold Joe Biden accountable. But unlike the Nuremberg trials that only tried those doctors that destroyed the lives of human beings, we are going to come after the press that lied to the world. Trample on snakes. Think Stalin, Mao, Hitler, Pol Pot, they didn't get there overnight. The coalition's outrage merchant at it again. The totalitarian path, the path that we are unquestionably on, has never ended well. His latest target, state premiers. The solution is a rediscovery of human dignity, along with, and I don't say the this lightly, civil disobedience. Time. Standing in the parliament that makes laws, George Christensen called on voters to break them in protest against vaccine mandates and what he sees as state overreach. 77 years ago today, the largest concentration and death camp in Europe, Auschwitz-Birkenau, was liberated. By then, more than six million Jews and millions more people, including Roma and Sinti, Slavs, persons with disabilities, LGBTQ individuals, had been killed by the Nazis and their collaborators. Today... If ever there was a place that shows the death toll from the pandemic, this would be it. At this crematorium in Saxony, Eastern Germany, employees have been working around the clock seven days a week. Its manager says the death rate has doubled, starting in November, as the area struggles with a second wave. Some coffins are marked risk of infection. Jörg Schaldach says it's doubly hard because they can't allow next of kin to say goodbye to their loved ones. Germany has surpassed two million coronavirus infections and its death toll has reached almost 45,000, experts said on Friday. Fears over more contagious variants are fanning concerns that existing lockdown measures aren't tough enough. The deadliest pandemic in 100 years. On International Holocaust Remembrance Day, we honor those innocent lives lost. We honor, too, Holocaust survivors, those who saw true evil and whose lives were unalterably shaped by it. That charge is as important as ever today, as we see rising anti-Semitism and Holocaust distortion and denial around the world. History tells us these acts are often the canary in the coal mine. They foreshadow trouble, not only for Jews, but also for other marginalized groups, that if left unaddressed, is often a precursor to violence, atrocity, even genocide. Ich 
So, hallo liebe Genossen und Genossinnen in der Linksstaatlichkeit. Also hier, willkommen. Hundreds of people at an anti-lockdown protest stormed the steps of Germany's parliament building, the Reichstag. Das ist der Wahnsinn! In a group of COVID deniers and anti-vaxxers, fascists were waving the imperial German flag in place of the band swastika. For the country that spawned the Nazis, these scenes highlighted the dangers of the volatile, conspiracy-addled far-right fringe that's grown over the last decade. Wollt ihr die totale Pharma-Diktatur? From QAnon to the Reichsburgers, a far-right group which sees itself at war with the state, conspiracy theories have got a hold on Germany. These events in Berlin were incited by a woman called Tamara Kirschbaum. These events in Berlin were incited by a woman called Tamara Kirschbaum. These events in Berlin were incited by a woman called Tamara Kirschbaum. These events in Berlin were incited by a woman called Tamara Kirschbaum, a leading figure in the country's thriving QAnon scene. Tamara called on the protesters to swarm the steps of the Reichstag. And said President Trump that we the world free. Whipping the crowd into a frenzy by saying Donald Trump was in Berlin and that for some reason this meant that their movement had won. I don't know about you, but I choose to fight and lead the charge to protect our constitutional republic. You elected me to fight for you, and that is what I'm going to do. Patriots, it's time to take the gloves off and stop conducting business as usual. After being attacked for speaking the truth and sounding the alarm, we see where all across the country our liberties are in fact being stripped away from the citizens, just like we warned you about. The leader of the Oklahoma Republican Party not backing down from a controversial Facebook post comparing vaccine mandates to the Jewish Holocaust. In this post last Friday, GOP Chair John Bennett seemed to liken private employee vaccine mandates to the Nazis forcing Jews to wear the Star of David in Nazi Germany. How dare you! In a new video today, which showed a Bible on Bennett's desk instead of a gun like he had on Sunday, Bennett reaffirmed his beliefs. Several high-ranking Oklahoma Republicans, along with local Jewish Federation leaders, have condemned Bennett's rhetoric. We will see definitively a lot of anger uh, already now. The, the power of misinformation. And we must also fight the plague of vaccine misinformation and do much more to ready our world for the next outbreak. The mechanisms are being put in place. We face a cauldron of political unrest and ferocious conflicts. Mistrust among world powers is reaching fever pitch. And the information superhighway is clogged with hatred and lies, giving oxygen to the worst impulses of humanity. None of us can run and none of us can hide. This week, some of the biggest names in the anti-vax movement descended on D.C. for a rally to protest vaccine mandates. And Robert F. Kennedy Jr. repeated a comparison that really should never be made, but keeps being made in the anti-vax rhetoric. Um, Oy. you know, it, <laughs> <laughs> you just got to get your facts straight, first of all. And, and he's not the only person comparing vaccine mandates to Nazi Germany. But how can anyone be this misinformed? Not just about the vaccines and the mandates, but about history. How is it possible? And, and, and in fact, maybe it's possible because there have always been so many deniers. Trample on snakes. Whoopi Goldberg opened The View today on a very serious note, continuing to apologize in the wake of her controversial comments about race and the Holocaust. I want to apologize. My words upset so many people, which was never my intention. Whoopi Goldberg apologizing on The View today for saying the Holocaust was not about race. What are you talking about? Shame on you. I regret my comments, as I said, and I stand corrected. I also stand with the Jewish people, as they know and y'all know. Whoopi caused an uproar Monday, discussing a Tennessee school district's controversial ban on Mao's, the Pulitzer Prize-winning graphic novel about the Holocaust. The Holocaust isn't about race. Her co-host seemed taken aback. No, it's well, not about maybe race. Maybe it's, 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 no, it's, it's about a different race. But it's, it's not about race. 
It's not about race. What is it about? Because you, it's about man's inhumanity to man. She also characterized the slaughter of six million Jews like this. This is white people doing it to white people. Yeah. The response was swift, a blizzard of social media posts telling her, yes, it was about race and headlines like this. Whoopi was already scheduled to appear on The Late Show with Stephen Colbert to promote her role on the new season of Star Trek. So she seized the opportunity and explained what she meant. Would you care to uh, follow up? Clarify what you said this morning. Most of the Nazis were white people, and most of the people they were attacking were white people. So to me, I'm thinking, how can you, how can you say it's about race if you are fighting each other? To them, yes, that was racist. Only Jews were killed. Six million Jews and a million and a half healthy, beautiful children. What are you talking about? And these gutless Holocaust victims. Overnight, she tweeted her apologies. I said the Holocaust is not about race. I stand corrected. I'm sorry for the hurt I have caused. I want to apologize. Yesterday uh, on our show, I misspoke. References to the Holocaust come at a sensitive time. Last Thursday was International Holocaust Remembrance Day. Acts of anti-Semitism are making headlines. Saturday, a snowplow driver appears to deliver deliberately slosh snow over two Orthodox Jewish men walking to synagogue in Lakewood, New Jersey. Then he laughs. <laughs> the driver has been suspended by his company. Police are investigating. Absolutely unconscionable and disgusting. The completely disgusting, vile trivialization of the Holocaust. We have to condemn this disgusting stuff. Disgusting rally and a really a sign that things are not going very well in this country. You're just waking up, well, dude, wake up. Look into the, to life. Look, on, look in what happened. Why should you, you should forgive? You came home to the empty walls. All my family was killed because they were Jews. Not because they weren't good people. We want everybody should be happy and our children should grow up without races. They should be together strong and bring a beautiful, make a beautiful world here that everybody is accepted and everybody deserves to have a good life to live. And all the children deserve, she, they should be the same and united and work together. Yeah. After another Twitter user tweeted that Heinz should have said her husband was wrong to compare the vaccine situation to the Holocaust, the actress replied, yes, I agree with you. I want to apologize. Ah, a crystal knock to remember. What? More! Hitler! This afternoon, I visited the Holocaust Museum. The Holocaust is... There's nothing comparable to it. It's... it's it happened and, you know, over six million Jewish people were murdered. The horrors of the Holocaust are something that some people don't even believe happened. There have always been so many deniers. We remember all those who were murdered in the Holocaust under Nazi persecution. And the way that that original rainbow is described is as being a rainbow that emerges from the clouds.
So in this interview, we see no mention of alien lizard humanoids. One of the things you talk about in in the book is that Homo sapiens may die out in hmm. sort of, in kind of basically like 80 years is what you say. You like yeah, in the next century or so that we as Homo sapiens may cease to exist. Why why is that and, and who is replacing us? Hmm. Well, first of all, species disappear. 99% of species that once existed don't exist anymore. Uh, 50,000 years ago, you had at least six different human species on Earth. Besides us, you have the Neanderthals and the Denisovans and others. They are not here anymore. So species, including human species, disappear. Now, regarding our own fate, Homo sapiens, we are now creating technologies to re-engineer life. Bioengineering on the one hand and artificial intelligence on the, on the other hand. Yeah. So given these technologies, I think it's very likely that in a century or two, Earth will be dominated by entities. Entities? That are much more different from us than we are different from Neanderthals. You know, we share most of our body, our brain, our emotions with Neanderthals. Yeah. We are certainly organic creatures like them. But in 200 years, Earth might be dominated by the first inorganic creatures in, in the history of life. So, given the power of these technologies, I think there are just two options. Either we destroy ourselves in the process, or we upgrade ourselves into something we can't even imagine. We can't imagine it because even our imagination is the product of organic chemistry. And here we are talking about the emergence of entities. Entities. The demons. Which will not be subject to the laws of organic chemistry. In moments like this, it becomes ever more important that we all remain vigilant against efforts to rewrite history and protect the facts of the Holocaust. That we speak up and act against manifestations of hate against any and all groups, wherever they occur. And that we do everything in our power to stand up to tyranny and to stop conflicts before they start. That must be our mission on this International Holocaust Remembrance Day and every day. It's been so lonely without you Stop these lonely tears from falling Tell me Where did I go wrong? I can put my arms around any girl I choose But it just reminds me How is anybody supposed to find a fucking a terminology that they don't even fucking know, you dumbass? That's why they use the word Illuminati. It's because everyone fucking knows the word Illuminati. Fuck. Not everyone knows the word Phoenician. Straight up fucking mind control implanting in your subconscious. 